In this video, I'll show you how to set up your Office printer so you can scan directly from the printer to your email address. This is especially useful if you're in a larger office so you don't have to walk back and forth to back to your desk and back to the printer. In this example, we'll be using an HP laser printer and a Microsoft 365 business account, but it will be similar with other printers as well. First, we're going to access the printer using its IP address. And don't worry if you haven't done anything like this before. In this video, I'll show you exactly step-by-step -step on how to set this up. My name is Bogdan Sperny, founder of Apex One Tech. All my content is free to you. All I ask is that you subscribe and smash the like button. And if you need help like this for your business, please see the description below and reach out via the links there. Okay, so what we're setting up here is technically called direct send, what Microsoft calls it here. So right, send mail directly from your printer or application. And you know, there's a lot of different methods. You can go on the printer, you can scan to like a flash drive, a network drive. All those could be good options. One of the easiest ones is just to go up to your printer, hit scan, scan to email, and just select your email address there. The scan is all done, you can feed the paper, it's done, and you get the full PDF or of whatever you scan straight in your inbox. So that's what we're setting up here. There are some limitations with this method that I'm going to show you, but it's also kind of the most robust way to do this. So you can only send the email to someone internally in your business that's within your Microsoft 365 business account, okay? So they have an it's basically someone on your team. You can't just send it out to a client. You wouldn't really want to do that. Two, you can actually send this from any email address. So we'll set up a group email address that you can send this from. So even you know when people change in your business, you don't have to go and update this email address. And then finally, one of the things we can do here is also add, and it's going to tell us here, we need to add an SPF record okay, to our domain provider or host. And that's to, right here is what it talks about. So that's the DNS records for your website, and I'll show you how to get there. But you add this just so that Microsoft doesn't flag the email coming in as spam, or maybe it'll block it completely and you won't receive it. So if that's the case, it's kind of an optional step, but if you're not receiving it, you'll have to add this SPF record. So the first step here is to go and create a group email address. Really, it's called the distribution list. So this is where the email is going to be sent from on the printer. You could use someone's personal email address here, like your own if you're the business administrator, but it's kind of better to set up a distribution list. So go to admin.microsoft.com, right? This assumes you're an admin, of course. So go to teams and groups, active teams and groups. And you can set one up like this that I have here, printer, and it's printer at your domain.com. I'll just show you how to set a new one up and maybe we'll call it a scanner or something. Okay, so let's click add a distribution list. So name, this is scanner. Let's just do that. Okay, so you can type in something like this, then just click next. So owners, uh, you know, just yourself, it doesn't matter who's in here, right? So just search for your name and add yourself, then click add, then click next. Now, if you actually want to receive, you, you could add yourself here as well, but we don't have to, just click next. So this is the email address, so we'll just do the same thing, scanner, and we don't want anyone to email us from to here, so let's just skip that and click next. And then click create group. All right, so then we just click close on this. Okay, so we have here now the distribution list email that we created, so it's here, it's good to go. The next step is that you want to set your printer IP address as static. Now, there's a lot of different routers out there, so I can't show you exactly how to do that. But depending on what you have, just look it up. Like if you have a Netgear router, just type in the model name, Netgear, you know, AC1600, whatever, and type in static IP or set static IP address, okay? So this is kind of optional. This is if you're going to do the other optional step of adding the SPF record, which I would recommend. But if you're not sure, you can skip the step of setting the static IP address. Next, we need to copy the MX record from our Microsoft 365 domain settings. So here in the admin center, go to settings and domains, then select your default domain, go to DNS records. Okay, and you should see, first of all, you'll see who manages your DNS or who hosts your DNS settings or provider. So in our case, in the example we'll, we'll be going to is GoDaddy, uh, but your MX record is here. So just click on that. Okay, so here all you want to do is copy this value and we're going to be using this value later in our printer settings. So let's do that next. So to access the printer, 
via the browser, you want to grab the IP address. So if you set the static IP address, I'll show you how to do that. But if you did not, uh, you can also just go to your Windows settings and just search for printer. You should have something like this, right? Printers and scanners pop up. Find the printer that you have, click on that. Then typically you'll have a Mac address or a web page address. So just scroll down, device information. And here you can actually click right here where it says web page. You can click on that and that'll bring you to the correct spot. And it should bring you to this page here, which is all the printer settings. This is where you need to be. Otherwise, let me show you how to use the IP address. So typically in your browser, you can just type in the IP address and then just hit return. Okay, so it should lead you there. If it does not, sometimes you have to type in HTTPS colon forward slash like that and just go advanced and proceed. Okay, this is your own printer, so don't worry about it. Okay, so now here in the settings, and again, this is specific for this HP laser printer, but other ones should have something like this similar. So find the scan settings. So here we have the scan. And it's something about, so we're not doing a network folder, look for something called scan to email setup. Okay, and this kind of gives you an overview of what needs to happen. So what we do need to set up is the outgoing email profile. So where it's going to be sending from. So go ahead and click there and let's click new. Now the first thing we want to do here is paste that MX record that we copy from the admin center here under SMTP server. So go ahead and paste that there. So we want to use SMTP port 25, and then you can check mark this to use a secure connection. Then your email address, so this is where it's sending from, okay? So the one we created, right, we can use scanner, or if you made something else, so just go ahead and type that one in. And display name is just for yourself to see this, so maybe the name of the printer or something. Okay, and now the rest of this you don't need. See, you would need this if you use a different method, but uh, this is this is the best way here. So we don't need any of this. And you can uncheck auto CC. We don't need to send the scan to the same email address that we scanned from. All right, so now if you do not want to add that SPF record, uh, that's kind of optional, and you want to just see if this is going to work, you can go ahead and click save and test. And we might as well do that, but then we're still going to add that SPF record. So let's click save and test. Great, so it's been completed. We can go to the printer and test this out. Uh, first, we actually need to add some people to the address book. So here, let's let's go. Again, this might be a little a bit different depending on your printer, but you can click OK here. And now it just shows the profile that we created, where it's sending from. We can edit or test again if we need to. Then next, we want to go to email address book. And here, for example, you know, maybe I'll add myself and add your email, your work email that you use. Then click add and edit. Okay, and so everyone should appear here. And you essentially need to add anyone who's going to be using that scan to email option on the printer. You basically need to add their email address here. Now in email options, you can set some defaults here. So maybe, right, this says where it's coming from or what this is, so maybe scan document. We don't need any by text. Usually, you know, depending again on the printer, PDF, that's good. So scan resolution, usually want to go text, 300 DPI is pretty good. Prefix, yeah, maybe scan, dash, right, something like that, and apply. So this is the name of the file that's, that's going to be there. All right, so that's all the settings there, and you should be good to go now. So the last step is updating the SPF record that you have in your host DNS settings. In this example, we're using GoDaddy, so we're going to go to GoDaddy, but it's going to be similar to whoever's providing or hosting your domain, whoever you bought it from. So let's go to GoDaddy.com. So usually you can click here on your name. So from here, you can typically go to My Products and you should see the domain that you purchased. Right, so here we have, if I expand this, this is the domains that we have on this account. So you can click Manage or just straight to the DNS settings here. Okay, so now we want to scroll down and until we find this, so maybe show all of them, we want to find something that's called, it's a text record, it's a TXT, could be in the next page. Yes, it's the last one here. So it's a TXT type, and you'll know you're looking at the right, right one where you, where you see V equals SPF. So 
this is what you should see by default, right? If you already have your email working uh, under this domain, this is what it will show. But we want to modify this to add the IP address, the static IP address of the printer. And if you're doing this for more than one, you'll I'll show you how to do that as well. And all you do here, I just brought it up here so you can see it better, is between this space, so right after SPF1 space, you want to paste your IP address with a space and a prefix of IP4 and semicolon. Okay, so make sure you add that. Then you add the IP address and make sure there's a space, just one space. Okay, so this is critical that your spacing is correct here. So there's one space here before IP4 and one right after your IP address. And if you want to add another one, so let's say you're doing this for two printers, just copy that space. So make sure there's one space there. And okay, maybe our next one is this. All right, so now we have that. I'm going to copy it. We go here, we select the entire thing and we paste that there. Okay, remember no, no extra spaces, nothing like that. So that looks all good. This can remain as it is and then just click save. Okay, we just need to verify our identity, that's fine. So just complete that. Okay, there it is. So it said it updated it. It might take up to 48 hours for it to properly work. Uh, so just weigh that out. You know, maybe before you use the setting, if if you don't see this coming into your spam, but this should now work from your printer. So go ahead and test that out. I mean, make sure you of course have the address book updated. So when you select where to scan from, you can select your own email address. And even if you added these records, it might still go to spam the first time. So just go into your spam folder and make sure your mark is not spam. And, and that's all. So now you can send any scan document straight from the printer. By the time you get back to your desk, you should see it in your email inbox. Hit the like button if this helped you out and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you were able to do this with another brand, another model, uh, maybe even the Google account, please let me know in the comment section below. Maybe some things I missed that you can help us all out. Thanks for watching. Take care.